there I was. I arrived back on Main Street from being away from four years at college. The place that was familiar to me, the stores, the smells, the sounds, but something was different. The businesses that I was used to, the store that I learned to tie my first tie, was out of business. As I walked down the street, the flower shop that I bought my first prom date was for sale. And the places that I knew that were familiar were hurting. They were in distress. Where it became very personal is that my mom and dad owned a small business that was in that town. My mom owned a bookstore. And what made that bookstore special is that it felt like you were walking into a movie. Does anyone have a movie when they were a child that they just played over and over to that VHS tape wore out? Yeah? You got to see a few hands. So for me, it was The Wizard of Oz and the story of The Wizard of Oz is that Dorothy was from this small town and you know, she very aggravated and frustrated with you know, where she was and Mrs. Gulch controlled everything and there was this magical place that she wanted to get away and experience. Well, in my mom's bookstore, what made that business unique is that it had a real yellow brick road. It had a real 32-foot neon rainbow and a hot air balloon. So it was one of those distinctive places that people in the community came to share and to discuss and learn and to imagine things. But then coming back and walking down my main street, I arrived at my mom's store and I came in and she, she smiled like she always does and gives me, gave me a very big hug. But I could see in her eyes she was tired. And I said, Mom, what's wrong? And she said, Jason, things have changed. And that's when I knew there was a problem. And uh, not only an economic problem, but what was happening behind the facades. Because at a human level, we all put up a facade, right? We all put up a facade, and it's sometimes to get to that core, you have to dig in by asking questions. So when I was with her, I started to dig in more, and she says, Jason, there's something I need to tell you. Your father and I, we've been discussing this, and we're going to get a divorce. And so that's when life got real. Not only were the, the community dealing with business issues, but those business issues translated on a personal level. And that instantly became my why for what I wanted to do. When I arrived here in Las Vegas and had a chance to meet with the Caddo's creative team, one of the first questions they asked was, what, when you were eight years old, what did you want to be when you gr grow up? And to me, think about that question. To me, that question really inspired that imaginative state, that you know, dreaming and thinking about what the possibilities. And when I was young, the thing that I loved to play with was Legos. Because really, you could take Legos and you could form them into anything that you wanted to see and do. And so my answer of what I wanted to be is I wanted to build things. I wanted to create and I wanted to do. And so I have a story because the transition that was happening in our community, a lot of the leaders saw the opportunity to create economic development by focusing on big box stores that were outside of our town. And while that's economic development, it creates jobs, it creates opportunities, there's a lot of things that have been built on good, in good intentions that have other effects that we're not totally aware about. And my story starts with my cat, Tiger. Did anyone have a pet when they were growing up? So uh, my pet, uh, Tiger, uh, we basically, from the point when I was five years old, would go and do everything together. You know, we would travel around the house. Uh, I, of course, would snuggle Tiger in a blanket and he didn't like that very much. We'd even go out to the sandbox and uh, of course, Tiger dug holes and planted things in the sandbox that I uh, didn't really care much about, but that's what cats do. But my example with Tiger is that to some level, uh, I love the cat and I would do things to help it. So any of you have children in the room, I see, I know there's some parents that are well. So my parents were really concerned about uh, my journey growing up because I wanted to help Tiger and one way to do it on a very hot day uh, when things are really hot, we had a big deep freeze in our garage. And so I thought, this makes sense. If, if I'm hot, Tiger's probably hot too. So I opened the deep freeze, put the cat in. Luckily, luckily, I went to mom and said, you know, where's Tiger? And said, well, I put it in the deep freeze. She got out through the door, opened the cat, jumped out. <laughs> so step number two, with good intentions, uh, it was also a, a very uh, wet day. We, cat and I were out playing and I had seen uh, when my mom had wet clothes, she went down to the dryer and you know, put them in the dryer. So I carried Tiger down, put Tiger in the dryer, and luckily you know, I went to my mom and said, hey, Tiger was wet, so I put him in the dryer. So we went down, get the cat, cat's still safe. 
And you know cats have nine lives. I've already used up two, so let's get to number three. The third time, <laughs> as we went out, we played, and the tiger got dirty. So at this time, I went and got what, again, if mom had dirty clothes and you wanted to make your whites whiter, you grabbed a thing of bleach. Oh my God. <laughs> so poor tiger got bleach on him. And at that point, his hair fell out, and we had to take him to the veterinary, wrap him up, and protect him. And you know, it sounds kind of awful of all these things that happen, but the thing about it is my intentions were good. What I wanted to do is, is take care of Tiger. The same lessons happen in economic development is that we have these, these ideas that by doing certain things we don't necessarily know the rippling effects that we have. This is the history of my town. It contained businesses that were retail, were restaurants, were entertainment. This was the center of the community. And so over the years, that's going to change. It's going to evolve. It's never going to stay the same. But you can actually take your building blocks, and there's certain building blocks, if you line them up correctly, it can create something very special. So for me, I needed a vehicle to, to really allow us to invest in real estate that allowed it to be sustainable. And there's two kind of principles, I say, to when you look at wealth. There's wealth in the aspect of money, and there's wealth in the aspect of the culture, the character, the energy that that, that community has. And I really believe you need both of them to, to make that sustainable and lasting. So for me, when I was in college, one of the problems that a lot of my roommates had is that uh, we had all this stuff. You know, and instead of hauling it home, our parents had to come uh, dur you know, during the semester, pick it up and take it back home. So it came for an opportunity for me to, uh, to, to raise some money uh, to build a self-storage facility. So we help people with their storage needs. And so that became a vehicle then to also identify other problems. As we had business customers that were storing with us, they were saying, you know, hey, Jason, uh, we, we really are having a tough time marketing ourselves in the small towns, yet there's all these highways that are around us. How, you know, how can we get the word out of what we do? So we started building a network of advertising structures, outdoor billboards, that when there was traffic going through, we could market and tell the story of our local businesses. So those became the vehicles to really do the love and the passion. And this was our first project. We bought a building that had sewage in the basement. Uh, it had a cafe, a, uh, a salon, and it had a roof that had failed. So if you can imagine going in the cafe and ordering sewage soup, does that sound tasteful at all? No, it's miserable. And so we had to really systematically identify what could we do to rebrand this property. So I started asking the community, what do you want? The property was called the Center City Mall, and they wanted something that this could be a meeting place. It could be a center where small businesses could interact and exchange ideas. So over the process, we started looking at the systematic issues. The front of the building had an issue, but the rear of it had an issue as well. We needed to make it more attractive so people wanted to see and wanted to visit it. So the biggest thing that you can do sometimes is bringing light to, light to things. So the first point of, of development was find your why. You know, reach out and find your why. The second thing that I think is essential is start to test the what's. What if we do this? What if we do that? So the biggest thing, when we started bringing light into the space, it also brought light to issues in the community. Why were our small business struggling? They needed education. They needed support. They needed to know that there's people that are around them that are like them. So in essence, it was community building. And then from that point, we started looking on the inside of the space. What was it that we could bring Main Street from the outside to the inside? So it was creating the, the materials, the, the, the look, the feel, the signage. And instantly, as we started doing that, uh, we brought an artist. This is Marilyn Reed. And what her part and passion is, she loves to paint trees. And so throughout the building and the space, she brought that to life. She helped plant those seeds and that energy to build and grow. And then we started to do things that were fun. You know, that, that living inside when you were a child, those things that you looked up to, dreamed to, and imagined. And for me, and a lot of our, our folks, there's a hobby shop right in the middle of the, the, the property, which is now called the marketplace. So kids and families can come in and experience what happens right there in the hobby shop. And then we brought in murals because every community has history. And it's a history that needs to be told, whether it's your courthouse, uh, the, the proud uh, building and structure that, that many generations of people have went through, or if, if it's simply you know, the, the store that, that, that over the generations that property had, 
uh, that people remember things. They remember having a soda in the soda shop. They remember buying their first dress. And for me, you know, that was a very personal experience. The other thing is you've got to be prepared to have fun. And on the second floor of this building, we recruited jazzercisers. Has anyone ever jazzercised in here? Now you're laughing about that, but do not make fun of jazzercise because I'm telling you what, it hurts everywhere. <laughs> Connecting technology, finding partnerships. We found with our small businesses, we needed to take them from bricks to clicks. So we found a partner in the area that was bringing in the high fiber optic connectivity to each one of the units. And they did it, they did it because there was a partnership and a partnership that we could promote is that that connectivity creates strong communities. And remember, we had the billboards. So when we had the billboards, we could leverage getting that message out and creating that awareness. And, and then again, it's just celebrating when you have, actually have something that comes together, celebrating that moment and making it happen. Sometimes we need signs in life, signs that help point us in different directions because you know why there might be great businesses here in this community, you might not know where they're at. So the big thing that we focus is as we went around is, is really creating that pattern, that traffic, that signage, and again, having fun as people would, <laughs> would, would check in and as people would come to the community, we wanted to recognize them. This is the best parking place in town. Um, and we want to recognize our four square you know, people for taking action and doing that. The other thing was involving community the charitable nonprofit organizations. And our town, the United Way, is kind of the hub for all of the other spokes that, uh, of the partners in the nonprofit area. So we invited them and gave them an opportunity to be at the focal point right in the center of the property. And that brings people, brings excitement and energy to say this new office is opening, this new thing is building. The other thing that we did is like, what is it that people need and want? And, uh, I know Winston spoke yesterday, but he'd be very proud of this because he makes the Hydros water bottle. But this is a drinking fountain that you can, if you've got a, a water bottle with you, you can actually fill it up. It makes it easy and quick. And why this might seem like a really small thing, this was something the community really got excited about and resonated. We put them all throughout the downtown space. Celebrate. When, when you work really hard and you're testing things, you're going to have a lot of successes. Uh, you're going to have even more failures. And sometimes, you know, when, when you're you know, actually testing what's going to work, you, you get lessons. You get kicked in the butt. And, and that's good. You know, it helps you learn and grow. Um, the other thing is, is we, the creative process was what could we do to really talk about as these new doors are opening in our community, how can we get, engage everyone to contribute? So this is the Doors of Encouragement project. And as you walk throughout the downtown and our properties, you're, you're, you're touched by this art and this art leaves an impression on you. And so that was about creating that, that magical experience for people that visit. So that's the after, you know, after we have a canopy on the building, after we've you know, really brought the facade. And I'm proud to say we have 14 new businesses that are now you know, thriving and participating in the community at the marketplace. Parking, you know, one of the things as we noticed as people were checking into Foursquare or their sh the, in the social world they were sharing feedback is that the parking was really what mattered to them. I mean, we have a drive-through economy today. So if you're really not addressing the, the, the parking and how you can make it attractive, easy to get to, um, clear and understanding if it's paid or not paid. That was something that we really learned a lot and focused on. And again, making the, the, the backs of the properties just as important as the front. Uh, you know, this is kind of an after picture of really, even the, something as simple putting an open flag outside as you go down, it just creates that energy that it's welcome. We want people to be there. The other social experiment, this was another property that went out of business, uh, a business that, be, uh, a property that came available is going through foreclosure. So we did a social experiment of buying a domain name, uh, newplaceintown.com, and putting a, a Facebook feature where we basically went out the community and said, this property's empty. What do you want to see here? What is it that you want to fill in here? And if you go to this site, this was just posted last week, in our very small town, we have over 1,400 likes and 450 comments. And these are ideas that we are following up with potential leads, uh, potential new business owners. And, and so really, it's involving the social web of filling an empty property. Let them be involved. Let them contribute those ideas. This is a building that we just purchased for a single dollar, one dollar. It's one of those properties that people drive by, and there's probably many of them in your own town and your own community. 
that they, they've lost love with. They, they've heard rumors of this, you know, it's been dilapidated, it needs to be tore down. And it literally in the last four to five months, um, we have been transforming this property because that's what it used to be. That's the history of what it, need, what it was. And it's got this legacy uh, of having the, the, the department store that three generations of, of men and women you know, appreciated buying all of those amazing goods that, for their household. And in the offices that took place in the second floor, as you walk through, you hear, you feel the energy of the conversations that used to take place there. You know, the, the, the breakthroughs, the transformations. And it's something that when you feel that energy, it gets you really excited to want to return it to what it was. So this is, uh, we actually put a new door actually leading up to the second floor, bringing in those new and modern elements with the history. And today, that's actually a shot that we took last week. We are systematically working on this building that, again, was a dollar. It's something we all drive by every day and, and re reinvesting the life, the energy, the creativity to bring it back, to bring it back. So what really inspired me, and I want to tell you about the little guy in the middle, that is Jackson Brown. And uh, last week he came up to me and, and his story, you know, just spending time with him really touched me. Um, he said, Mr. Duff, I just wanted to shake your hand and, and get to know you. And I said, well, it's really nice to meet you. I said, what, what is it that you like so much about, about what's going on? He said, the pizza place that now that you put in, it's, it's my favorite. And I kind of smiled at him. I'm like, well, that's, that's really cool. But he said, the next thing he said, he said, you know what? I really want to do something to pay it forward and, and really help out with what's going on here. And he held something up. And I'm like, oh, what's that? He's like, I'm selling calendars. And he said, I, I drew this calendar myself, and what I'm doing is I'm giving 25% of the profits that I'm making and contributing it back into the nonprofit here in the downtown to keep the revitalization going. So, you know, to me, what's so exciting is the next generation of people, those ripple effects of the energy of the ideas, he's actually taking on his own accord to go out and, and, and to raise money and to contribute it back. And I think that that is really... Uh, the, the last big part that Jackson really inspired me to do is, is to really be, you know, be the, be the, 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 the tools, the, the person, the energy to actually go out and, and make that difference. And just being a part of this community the last four or five days, I am so energized, I am so excited, and it's been such a welcoming experience. And I want you to know, on completely the other side of the country, in one of the smallest towns in Ohio, you have people that are rooting you on and also here to support you. We would be uh, just as, as welcoming to have you come to our little social experiment and to share and to learn and to grow. But it has been my pleasure to share some of the things that we're doing and uh, thank you for allowing me to be a part of, of your community. Yes. Yeah. So uh, its situation was it was considered blighted. Uh, and the perception was what happened, part of the roof failed on the back of the building. And uh, it started popping some of the terracotta tiles on the outside. So the newspaper told the story, the building's falling down. But as an entrepreneur, we go in to really assess, you know, what's the engineer say? What, what is the, the situation with the traffic counts? What is the energy that's in the property? So after we evaluate, evaluated those three things, we have actually felt that that was the best built building in the downtown. And so it was a marketing, it was a perception issue. So immediately we started you know, clarifying that message and then just by putting new windows in the property, people started saying, wow, something's going on here. That, that must be an asset. I want to be a part of that. Um, so I think it's, it's really identifying as you walk around here, it's just human nature to have the same kind of experience. Ah, that's just blighted and you know, there, there's, there's, you know, it's going to take a long way to bring that back. But once the energy starts to flip, people are drawn to that and they want to be a part of that. And that's what is so exciting about what's being developed here. Any other questions? Yes? Yeah, it was a really great presentation. Um, oh, thanks. The question is, uh, what is, what was sort of your background? I mean, just obviously you're doing things that are very architectural and you know, commercial building and stuff. But in terms of like the lens through which you view uh, this experiment, what was maybe the most influential uh, person or concept or whatever that gave you this vision? So I think uh, when you grow up in a family business, you learn to be a jack of all trades. Uh, I mean, my parents, if they said, we need help filing, uh, you know, you need help, the, toilet, the toilet's a mess, we need to get it cleaned up. So you just start doing things, and because of that doing, 
I think if you think in Instagram terms, you have these different lenses. And when you put the lenses over situations, um, you can help see that, see things that other people can't see. And so you try to give that perspective and then it really comes down to attracting other people that feel the energy and, and believe what you believe. But then also I think to some of you have to, you have to promote. Um, you have to uh, help clarify the message because th while a lot of people may judge small, t small towns really harshly, it's a reflection of America. The things that are happening there, um, there's actually a lot of great lessons that I think can heal what's happening in the cities and vice versa, we need each other. Um, so I, I, I think, does that, does that help provide that perspective? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. How close is the Walmart to the city? So it's about uh, eight miles outside of town. And uh, the Newport Supercenter really four or five years ago is what really challenged us because it used just to be a traditional Walmart and then it developed to a Supercenter. So while Walmart's going to exist, it's not going away, it's now forcing us to step it up. And I think that through the education, working to, to get properties uh, up to code today so new businesses can occupy them, and then once we have them in the properties, it's really teaching. Uh, we basically have a monthly marketplace meeting where we are sharing ideas, we are um, helping each other with social media, so that training, that education, that an accountability um, that's been our way to compete against the big boxes. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys.